That is one place you go to and there is no coming back. And Jesus stands before this situation where there is no answer, where there doesn't seem to be any sort of a solution. And he looks up to heaven and says, Father, I thank you because you have heard me. I know you always hear me. Jesus knew something about uh, Jesus knew something about God. Jesus knew something about about the favor of God. Jesus knew something about the way God thinks. So he looks up to God and he and he and he thanks him and he praises him. And then there's another incident in the Acts of the Apostles. Paul and Silas have been unmercifully assaulted and put into prison. And they have been put into the high security, high security area of the prison also. It's not just a normal prison cell, but into the high security area. And while they are in prison, while they are in this situation, they begin to sing praises. And in, and in that situation, praise seems to bring down a breakthrough. There is an earthquake and their shackles are broken. And if I look at, if I remember, uh, King Jehoshaphat, uh, when he goes for, uh, to war, uh, he sends, not, he doesn't send his army, he doesn't send his marksmen, he doesn't send his, uh, he doesn't send his crack troops in front of, uh, uh, to, to meet the enemy. The first group he sends is the music ministry and they sing praises and the God intervenes in that war. So praise seems to bring breakthroughs. But is praising just an effective way, another way of asking God to intervene? Is it a shortcut for us to uh, get God to act faster in our circumstances or is there something else that is hidden, that is hidden in, praising, uh, in praising God when things go bad? So uh, about two weeks ago, Father Augustine Valluran came, uh, addressed, uh, we, we had a Pentecost rally here in Singapore. And uh, Father Augustine Valluran was the keynote speaker for our Pentecost rally. And one of the things that he talked about during the Pentecost rally was that when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. What do you mean by all truth? For example, I believe you all know the story of Joseph, right? So Joseph, Joseph's brothers push him into the pit so that he will die and so that they will get rid of a problem. They were jealous of him. One truth is that the brothers were jealous. One truth is that Joseph is facing a no a, a, a no hope situation. But then all of the truth is that pit is the entry point into Joseph's journey into the house of the Pharaoh in Egypt. Moses' basket. Moses' sister is keeping Moses in a basket and keeping him near the water to, to protect him from the Egyptian soldiers. When her hand slipped and the basket went into the water, she must have thought that it was the end of the world. But that was the place, that was the route God had chosen for Moses to be brought up in the house of the Pharaoh. If Moses had been brought up inside in, for one thing that he was a, he was a boy, they would have killed him if they caught him. Uh, 
So God had a way of protecting him because God had a plan. That is the whole truth. And also, I always think that uh, if Moses had grown up in a in a regular Jewish family, he would have his thinking would have been conditioned by the by the enslaved conditions that they lived in. He would have had what you call a slave mentality. But now he's taken out from his slave environment and placed in the house of the of the Pharaoh. He's educated. And he learns to think in a completely different environment. God is preparing him to lead the people of Israel. The truth was there was danger when Miriam, when Moses' sister, hand slipped and the, and the basket went into the water. All of the truth is the Lord was above the circumstances. The Lord was using her mistake to fulfill his plan. And if you go back to the incidents that we that I, that I shared earlier about, uh, about uh, Jesus feeding the 5,000, um, the Gospel of Mark says that uh, Jesus already knew what he was going to do. And then he asked his disciples, uh, Uh, how can we feed these people? Jesus knew something more than the disciples. Jesus knew all of the truth. When he stood before the tomb of Lazarus, Jesus knew something more than the truth that the visible, visible eyes could understand, that the, that the mind could comprehend. He knew something more. He knew all of the truth. And when you know all of the truth, when you know all of the truth, you begin to know that God's faithfulness extends beyond our circumstances. God's goodness is bigger than our is bigger than our problem and our our situation. Regardless of what you and I face, regardless of how hopeless the situation is, the truth is, all of the truth is, Jesus has not stepped down from the throne as yet. So I, I want to share my own experience of something that happened to me a few years ago. Uh, maybe y'all heard, y'all, I, I, I actually came to Colombo and I shared this uh, at St. Peter's a few years ago. Uh, so uh, what happened was uh, a few years ago, I had a financial problem <clears throat> and, uh, and I was praying to the Lord and asking, Lord, I, I don't know how to solve this problem. I had to pay a big credit card bill and I didn't, I was not able to, I didn't have the funds to do, uh, to pay this bill. And as I prayed, this thought dropped into my mind. How can I help you when you don't trust me? So I said, Lord, I'm praying to you. What do you mean I don't trust you? So I said, Diana, if you trusted me, you would have paid your tithe. You would have given me my due. And then only I realized, you know, when I calculate my, my expenses, the, the things that I had to pay, and I pay those things, I don't have enough funds to pay my tithe. And, uh, and therefore, until that time, I didn't pay my tithe. But that day, I was convicted to pay my tax. From that month onwards, every time I get my salary, the first thing I would do is I would take 10% of that salary and I would put it aside into a bank account. And the money I collect, we collected in that bank account, that was the money that we used to seed all the retreats that happened in Singapore. Now, the Bible promises 
the Bible promises to open the floodgates of heaven if you bring the tithe to the Lord. Now, I don't know about that, but I always had a hand to mouth existence. And uh, uh, around the year uh, 2014, I had to send my son to Australia for his higher education. Uh, we originally thought that he'd be able to go to Australia and get a part-time job, but uh, he really didn't get a part-time job, so I had to finance him. So by the year 2015, when he when he finished his degree and he came back, uh, I had uh, exhausted all my credit lines. Uh, and I thought that now that he's back, I would now be able to uh, save some money and put aside some money for for my uh, for my retirement and also like my in-laws used to live with me one of the biggest fears i had was that they would they would fall ill and uh, they didn't have insurance because i couldn't afford to pay for insurance and uh, and uh, if they fall ill i didn't have any funds to to pay for their to pay for their medical expenses. This was in 2015. Come 2016, uh, there is this group of people called activist, activist investors. These guys go and buy companies and they split it up into small parts and they sell it as yeah, small entities. For a, and make a profit out of it. They are not interested in the company. They are not interested in the welfare of the people. They just want to come in, invest money, and uh, and make a quick buck. So three active, three activist investors bought a significant amount of shares in the company that I worked in, and immediately they wanted a twenty percent, uh, a ten percent reduction in staff. The head of the Singapore operations had just left. So there was no one to protect the Singapore office and the Singapore office took the brunt of the, of the staff reduction. And I lost my job. I was 55 years old. Uh, I had no savings. I had run through my, I had run through my, uh, all my credit lines. And uh, in Singapore, if you're over 40, the chances of you getting a job is very slim because it's a high tech world over here. And when they look at old fossils like me, they think that we are not capable of high, high tech. And, uh, and one of the biggest problems in Singapore is that all people over 40 can't find jobs. So that was one truth. So of course, when some things go when things go bad, I call Lalit Tata. And uh, and so I I was I can remember I I was going for our prayer meeting and I called Lalit Tata and I told him uh, this has happened. And he told me, uh, you know, when you had your salary, when you had a job, you were faithful to the Lord. Uh, the Lord is going to turn this into a blessing. I don't know how, but the Lord is going to turn it into a blessing. You know, my brothers and sisters, the, there's a truth and all of the truth. The truth is I'm 55 years old. The truth is I am not very employable. The truth is my skills may be outdated. All of the truth was this. My mother-in-law was about to fall very sick. What I didn't know was, at the time that I was laid off, uh, I had worked for 12 years in that company. And the company decided to compensate me with almost one year's salary. And because it was on a compassionate grounds, the government didn't tax me. So the entire one year salary 
came into my account one month later my mother in law fell ill i couldn't afford to treat her in singapore so i we sent her down to colombo she was at sri jayawardenepur hospital even at sri jayawardenepur hospital there were some injections one injection was cost me 10000 dollars i can't imagine what uh, what i would have done if we had the, if we had kept her in singapore even in sri lanka one injection was 10000 dollars if i didn't have the compensation money that the company gave me when i lost my job i wouldn't have been able to treat my treat my mother in law the lord went before me the lord prepared the way and the lord prepared the funds for me and provided me gave me a creative solution on how to on how to uh, meet my need though it was a feminine as such he was providing for me in the desert he was providing water for me in the desert actually today that company has actually called me back and i'm working back for that same company it has been 5 years since that it is as though the lord did something uh, the lord intervened got me that compensation looked after my need and after that he gave me back i really loved that job and gave me back that job right so so there are two things one is there is the truth then there is all of the truth all of the truth is he is able to provide during the famine he is able to provide water in the desert we may not have we may not see any answers we may not have any guarantees but there's one truth that we can cling on to that is that he is faithful so uh, i'm not sure who is going to sit but i i'd like to invite you to reflect on the words of a song that uh, that brian berkson sings it's called your faithfulness and i i and it like uh, I'm not sure who if it, if that's good if you're good uh, if someone can Dilakshi. play that Dilakshi is the one who's going to sing I don't know whether she knows the song Dilakshi do you know it Yeah sorry I don't know the song <laughs> Okay then don't worry I will share my screen and I will uh, and I will play it for you shall we just close uh, close our eyes and uh, allow the Lord to minister to us the lord is here he is present here he is he is seated on the throne he has not stepped down from the throne shall we just let it minister to us just listen to these words and let the lord minister to you through these words i don't know what this day will bring Will it be this 
Disappointing or filled with long for things I don't know What tomorrow holds Still I know I can trust your faithfulness I don't know If these clouds mean rain If they do Will they pour down blessing or pain? I don't know what the future holds. Still I know I can trust your faithfulness. Certain as the rivers reach the sea Certain as the sunrise in the east I can rest in your faithfulness Sure than a mother's tender love Sure than the stars still shine above I can rest in your faithfulness I don't know how or when I'll die Will it be a thief? chance to say goodbye no i don't know how much time is left but in the end i will know your faithfulness when darkness Spirit, 
you are the one who leads us into all truth. Know the Holy Spirit. I pray for everyone in this meeting. I pray that you break through into their hearts. That you may show them all of the truth. That you may show them your faithfulness. That you will show them that no matter how dark circumstances are, that you are still seated on the throne. Lord, that day when you fed the 5,000, your resources came from heaven. Lord, the earthly resources were nothing worth writing home about. But Lord, you pulled the resources from heaven. Lord, although we may not have resources, although we may not see resources, Lord, all of the earth belongs to you. Give us eyes to see all of the truth. Give us eyes to see your faithfulness. Give us eyes Give us heart, give us a heart to rest in your faithfulness. All this we ask through Christ our Lord. Come in. Praise the Lord. Over to you. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much, Jonathan. Such an awesome message. Your testimony, I'm sure. Personally, it spoke to me, especially during these times, all of us are going through financial crises and all various kinds of issues. Uh, and your message, uh, I have, I think I've not heard all that uh, amazing, amazing, I should say. Uh, on time, this was uh, the timely message. Uh, so good. So I don't know uh, whether you'd be okay, but maybe if there is any question anyone wants to ask, we can ask you. Is that okay with you? Anyone? Anything? Sure, sure. <laughs> putting putting me on the hot seat. On and off. <laughs> so I just, uh, uh, while you were sharing, uh, uh, you know, um, you spoke about tithing and uh, uh, giving the 10% to God and all that. Uh, but, uh, you know, at times, uh, even for us, it's a struggle, right? It's a struggle. To but uh, is there anything that, what drove you to do that? Uh, even though uh, things were going well with you, you, you tied, right? Uh, but when things were not going well also, but I'm sure you would have done it. Yeah. But what was driving you from within to do it? Uh, what made you uh, know that God was 200% in charge of your future? Is there anything anything apart from what you shared? Uh, uh, it's it's actually that, that event that uh, I wasn't paying my tithe. And it was that when I, I got stuck with that credit card bill uh, uh, that the Lord spoke to me and asked me, uh, told me like uh, that uh, you don't, and he, he told me, he asked me, uh, how can I help you if you don't, when you don't trust me? And I didn't have money at that time. I didn't know how to pay my credit card bill. But when I got home that day, I suddenly remembered that my company had actually a few years ago had given me a granted me shares and which had actually they had actually doubled it over the time and uh, and that I I would be able to sell that and settle my credit card bill and uh, and I made a huge profit on selling those shares and uh, for me the answer was so profound at that time because I had no answer. It was so profound that uh, that from that day onwards, I had no qualm about about putting the money aside because the Lord met my need. Awesome, awesome, so good. Okay. Sometimes uh, uh, when you are sharing this. Uh, uh, we sometimes think God will put money in our pocket; it'll just fall like that. But 
something would have happened in the future, like you said, your, your shares doubled, right? But you also didn't have any idea about it. He's working behind the scenes and that is, yes. it's, it's amazing. Amazing. Yeah. And, and actually, like, although the Lord said that I will open the flat gates of him, when I look, always my pocket was empty. Like, like I never, I was always on the border of OD and uh, But when I look back on my life, I saw, uh, I had a car. Right in Singapore, a car is a big deal. Uh, for the price of one uh, one car in Singapore, you can buy the same car eighteen times over in the United States because there is a huge tax. The particular year that I had was to get it, that for some reason that tax disappeared, and uh, and uh, and then. Uh, Cars stay on, on, on the road for 10 years. And after 10 years, you have to put it aside. Or you have to, get, you have to pay another tax and, and, uh, uh, and, and extend its life. Now, my car was nearing its life period. And, uh, and the tax was very high that I couldn't buy a car. What happened? A freak accident happened. A concrete block came. Another car hit a concrete block. The concrete block came and came wrong in the air and hit me. And my car rolled over and it went was beyond repair. But because the market price of cars was higher, uh, insurance paid me a sum that I could buy another car with it. And now, but but now my installment was about three hundred dollars more than uh, more than what what I was uh, what I was paying currently. And the following week, my manager calls me into his room and said, "You know, we made a slight miscalculation when you when we calculated your salary, and your actual salary is this. And guess how much the increment was?" Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> so good to hear these kind of stories, uh, Agar, because it gives you faith, right? When you listen to stories, like, it's amazing. Then, is anyone who has any other question? Another another event like this. Yes, please do. <laughs> uh, again, like even though I'm paying tights, I I always struggle with my with my finances. So now again, I was stuck with a credit card bill that I had to pay. And we were at a prayer meeting, at a prayer meeting, and there was this bird of knowledge which said, uh, there is this person who has this problem. And uh, the Lord is saying in three days time, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to send, I'm going to make a way for you. So I claimed the word and I was waiting one day, two day, third day, I went to office, nothing happened. I worked the whole day, nothing happened. So I got into the train and I was coming home and I, I have to change trains I have at one point. So when I came to this station called Jurong East and I was getting into the other train, I get a call from a friend of mine. Uh, a guy who was working in Singapore, he went into, uh, he went back home for a holiday in Singapore and then the tsunami hit. And uh, and his house was uh, his house was destroyed. Before he went to before he went back to Sri Lanka, uh, he borrowed a significant amount of money from me. And now that tsunami hit, his house can't take the money back from the guy. <laughs> and I forgot about the money. Wrote it off. Now this guy had gone to the Middle East. He had found a job, and he had he, he had found a lucrative job. He calls me and tells me, uh, can you remember that time you gave me so much? Uh, I want to send you a money gram. <laughs> My credit card bill. Wow. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Good stuff. So it's go so awesome to, for you to share these things, especially during this time, like I said. Uh, and I'm sure all of us, uh, I can see so many of us, we are going through some kind of financial crisis, right? And we are also trying to solve it with worldly things, right? But I think the answer is God. God himself will give him and he will, he will multiply it, like what you said. So good.
So uh, it will be a few more minutes. I don't know. Shimali, I'll be going into uh, breakout rooms or do you want to share? Uh, not enough time for a breakout. No, maybe if anyone has questions, you can open it up. Yeah. So if anybody has questions to ask uncle or any feedback or thoughts, who is yours? You can even send your questions on the chat to one of us and maybe Richie, so. So no questions. All your answers, all your questions have been answered. The breakthrough is coming, that means. As you type to God, he's going to double and triple your amount for sure. Isn't it? Your credit cards are going to be settled. I can see it in your spaces. Your profile pictures also I can see. It. So good. So, Actually, um, I, was, I was reading the first book of Kings the other day. And... Uh, there's a story about how Elijah comes to the to the to the widow of uh, Sarafat, I think. Right. All these times, I thought that uh, Elijah was a selfish guy who would ask that woman for her, for her last bit of, uh, uh, of uh, wheat and, and and oil. But what I didn't realize was that uh, maybe Elijah coming there was God answering her prayer. Mm. Although it didn't seem like that, that uh, Eli, the Lord gave a leading to Elijah and said, go to this place and, uh, and uh, you will meet a widow. She's the one who is going to provide you with food. And uh, it's not like God just dropped everything into the into 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 his step or the widow's step. There was a price they had to pay, and as somebody said, uh, there is no fire without sacrifice. And and uh, uh, so there is something that the Lord is expecting of us, and when we when we respond in that, there is a breakthrough. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you. That's true. Actually, uh, when, you, when you were saying that, Uncle, I was just thinking, uh, I watched this uh, video and uh, there's a story which uh, they talk about. Uh, there's this guy who plants two kinds of seeds, a fern as well as a bamboo. But the fern grows, then and then it starts growing. But this bamboo takes years and years, but this guy's uh, not seeing any kind of a leaf even coming out. But on the fifth year, the bamboo hits 100 feet. And I think it's the same like that with our lives also. Like when you were, you were saying, you were tithing, when you said that, I remember this story. You just kept on doing it uh, faithfully. You just kept on like the guy who was pl who planted the bamboo but did not see anything for the for about five years. And it, all of a sudden, it hits the roof. It goes 100 feet. So, amazing. So good. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I don't think anyone else has any questions. So, uh, thank you, Angal, so much for taking your time. Uh, I think it's evening there in Singapore, right? And uh, even with a, such a short notice and with the wrong title also, right? You came, we, we put the wrong title, but you spoke the right words. So, uh, I think God is moving amazingly. And in that itself, we can see how the Spirit of the Lord was moving. Uh, so, Angal, we'll just maybe... Uh, as all of us as young adults of the CRL, we'll just maybe say a small prayer uh, for you, for your time, because you gave us this time, your precious time. So, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for Uncle Jay's life, for everything that you have done in his life, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the words that were spoken from his mouth, Lord. Lord, we know, Lord, that it has planted that seed in our heart. And uh, 
from today onwards, that seed is going to bear fruit, Lord Jesus. God, we surrender everything, his ministry, what he's doing in Singapore, and we surrender his family uh, into your hands, Lord Jesus, that he will increase and multiply whatever he touches, Lord. Let the words that he speak have spirit and let, have, let it have life, Lord. Lord, we surrender his finances into your hands, Lord, because he is a faithful servant, Lord. And Lord, we know that you will multiply that as well. Lord, let your presence, let your power be upon him, Lord. Let your Holy Spirit guide him in all things, Lord. Lord, we thank you for his life and for the ministry that he is doing and for the work that he's doing for your kingdom. Lord, we ask this all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Praise the Lord. So maybe we can wind up, right? Awesome. So it's so good to see all of y'all, uh, 14 of y'all, uh, even through the power cuts and through all these uh, stressful situations. Some of y'all might be in uh, queues at the petrol shed. Uh, things are going, uh, things are not in going well, right? But still, when you listen to the word of the Lord, the breakthrough will come. Uh, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of the Lord. And when you have more faith, as faith increases within you and me, uh, that's when the breakthrough comes. Uh, because if you do not have faith, you cannot uh, uh, please God. That's what scripture says. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. And when you, you are unable to please God, God is unable to do anything. So as you listen to the word, uh, the breakthrough will come. Uh, till we meet next week, uh, things are difficult these days, but uh, persevere in prayer. Uh, Listen to the word as much as possible. Uh, read scripture as much as possible. And uh, be blessed in whatever you do. Praise God. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Sharia. Uh, Dilakshi was singing. Suren, Oshini, Shanaka, Anika, Karin, Nirmal, Chatura, Romi, Shana, Shashika. Thank you, guys. Thanks for joining. Praise God. Praise God. Good night. God bless. Good night. God bless, guys. God bless. Yes. Yeah.